types of APIs. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the three different types of APIs. Also, you should be able to explain the differences and the management considerations for the three different types of APIs. There are three types of consumers. The first one is the internal or the private consumer. The internal consumer is part of the same organization that is the provider of the API. Second one is the public or the external consumer. This consumer is outside of the organization that is creating the APIs or that owns the APIs. The third one is the partner. This consumer has a trusted relationship with the enterprise or the organization that is creating and exposing the APIs. Based on the three, these three type of uh, consumers, there are these three type of APIs. The private API, which is meant for the private consumer or the internal consumer. The public API, meant for the public application developers. And then the partner API, which is meant for that trusted partner that is outside the enterprise or the organization. Although from implementation or code perspective, there is no difference in the API, but from the API management perspective, there are certain aspects that are different between these three different type of APIs. The private APIs are consumed by applications that are owned and developed by the application developers within the same enterprise or the organization. These applications may be internal to the organization and they may use the private APIs, or they may be applications available from outside the enterprise, in which case also they would use the same API. Notice the fact that the API for the private use is also sitting on the edge of the enterprise so that the external application can get access to it. If there was no public applications, then this API does not need to be on the edge of the enterprise. It can be within the firewall of the enterprise. The public API is always on the edge of the enterprise to provide a controlled access to the enterprise resources. The developer is an untrusted public developer who creates applications which connect to the enterprise resources by way of this public API. In the case of partner APIs, the organization exposes API to its trusted partners. And the trusted partner developers can create applications which operate within the context of the partner network to access these APIs. But at the same time, the partner developer may also create applications which may be available in the public domain. And these applications can also connect with the API that the enterprise is exposing. In this scenario, this is very similar to a public API. But in this case, the public developer is not involved and a partner developer is involved. So the organization exposing the API is aware of who is connecting to their APIs. As I mentioned earlier, there is no difference in the coding or design of the three type of APIs. The difference is in how you manage the three types of APIs. In this lecture, I'll cover four aspects that you as the API owner need to think through for each type of API that your organization plans to expose. The API security, documentation of the API, access requests for the APIs, and the SLA management. Let's go through the details of each of these. API security. In the case of a private or internal API, the API consumers are known. These are the app developers who can be trusted. So in this case, you really don't need very strict form of security. You can use basic auth or some token-based proprietary scheme. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do that, but from the feasibility and usability perspective, this is a very common practice adopted by many organizations. In the case of a partner API or a public API, you cannot trust the developers or the API consumers. In that scenario, you have to use stricter form of security such as key secret or OAuth. In fact, you should adopt a standard security scheme such as key secret and OAuth for all your APIs. I'll be covering the API security in a section on security. Irrespective of what the API type is, your app developers or API consumers will need the documentation for the API to code against it. In the case of a private API or a partner API, we're talking about a 
controlled environment. The API provider knows the API consumers. So the documentation can be provided by way of emails or by way of some kind of an internal website. This is a very common practice used for SOA services as well. In the case of a public API, we're talking about an uncontrolled environment. Now you don't know who the consumer of the API is. In that scenario, it is suggested that the API documentation be published by way of a website or a portal which is referred to as the developer portal. In fact, the suggestion that I have for you is that irrespective of the type of API, publish all your APIs on a developer portal. We will be covering developer portal in details in the section on API management. Once the API is ready, in order for the API consumer or the app developer to use the API, they need to raise a request to get the access. For the private and internal APIs, this request process can be an ad hoc process. It can be by way of an email or by way of some internal website or ticketing process. But in the case of a public API, we're talking about an uncontrolled environment where typically a website is created and the app developer can raise a request for access to the API by using this website or developer portal. As a good practice, irrespective of the type of API, the suggestion is that you create a developer portal and manage the access request from that developer portal. The developer portal can automatically grant access or initiate a manual workflow for granting the access. Since it's part of the developer portal, I'll discuss the details of this process in the section on API management. SLA stands for service level agreement. Let me give you an example of an SLA from API perspective. In this SLA, the API provider is guaranteeing 99.99% uptime for the API, a maximum rate of 20 calls per second without performance degradation, and support via email only. SLA does not have to be the same for different types of API. It is typical to have SLA tiers. For example, internal developers can get unlimited rate access to the API, whereas the public developer may be restricted to 20 calls per minute for the same API. Another important consideration here is the runtime SLA monitoring and management. In the case of public API, as an API provider, one needs to ensure that they are holding their end of the SLA by monitoring the key performance indicators of the API. This needs to be done to ensure that you are offering a quality of service that the API consumer signed for. As a good practice, an API provider should always define, publish, and manage the SLA for their APIs. In this lecture, I discuss three type of APIs, the private APIs, public APIs, and the partner APIs. The private APIs are leveraged by the internal application developers within the organization. The public APIs are the ones which are exposed to the public application developers. The application developers or the API consumers in the case of public API are not known to the API provider or the organization exposing the APIs. In the case of partner APIs, the API consumer is known but cannot be trusted. All of these APIs are designed and coded the same way. There is no difference. The difference is in how you manage the three type of APIs. There are four aspects that are discussed for which these APIs may be treated differently. The API security, documentation of the API, access request, and the SLA management.